taking a look at uh, clutch brakes, we can see we have multiple different styles. So this would be most typical or a common one to see in OEMs. These two are very common to see in the original equipment. And so this is a one piece clutch brake. And so what we can see is the tangs right here that would drive against the groove in the input shaft. And we can see on one side, we have the remnants of a friction material in this one, but we can see the friction material remaining right here. And so on a single disc clutch brake, to remove this, you would either need to cut it in two pieces and remove it or pull the transmission back to be able to get access to the end of the input shaft. That would be the same way to remove this one here and that's a torque limiting. So this torque limiting one, we can see that the center piece that is splined to our input shaft of our transmission is actually able to move inside the outer hub assembly. So on this outer housing, we can see there's friction material on one side, friction material on the other, where we squeeze this between the release bearing and the transmission adapter. And so then what we see is that during torque transmission, there's a movement of the input shaft as it's being squeezed and it holds eventually once we squeeze this clutch brake, we hold the input shaft through these tangs. So it is possible that if the operator in this one, let's say, the operator used the clutch brake while they were traveling down the road rather than simply in first and reverse, that would they would break these small tangs off. And instead of that, what happens in this limited slip or, or uh, torque limiting clutch brake is what it would be called, is that if the operator improperly used this, instead of breaking the tangs, it would simply overcome a certain amount of torque and then slip within the housing. When these fail, so either the tangs break or the friction material is wore off and so the clutch adjustment is no longer possible, like in this one, then what happens is you either have to cut them off or you have to remove the transmission to get them off or you could use a multi-piece clutch brake and so that's what this one is here. This is a multi-piece clutch brake in that it opens up and it allows you to wrap it around the input shaft, align the driving tabs right there into the input shaft grooves and then simply as it's in installed on the input shaft, apply the clutch all the way to the floor and as it squeezes it, it locks this snap into place. And so then that's a multi-piece in-service clutch brake that can be put in without removing the transmission so long as you were able to cut the old one off. Another style, and this one's been assembled to be a single piece right now but we can see the Z-Link right here. This is a Babcock style two-piece clutch brake and we can see the friction material is on the steel plate but the way the steel plates are held together is through a roll pin right here. This little roll pin drives through and connects the two halves and so normally when you would get these these would be two separate pieces separated right here. You'd be able to assemble them in to the onto the input shaft in the housing, the clutch housing. And then when you squeezed it, you would drive the roll pins with a pin punch. And then that would hold this together to become a one piece with the friction material and the correct size and the driving tang still working. Now, this one here, we can see that the drive tang has broken off and that's why we have it here is it is a failed clutch brake. So we have a failed clutch brake as a bro broken drive tab right there as well as the friction material removed off the back side. So those are our clutch brakes. We see a one piece, we see a one piece torque limiting and then we see two different multi-piece in-service clutch brakes.